Our guest is the associate editor of The Fourth Estate, Seth J. Bokwe, is here with us in the studio. Seth, it's good to have you. Good morning. Thank you, Kojo. Thank mm. you for having me. Yeah. Now, th this is an interesting one. I mean, you've been looking through data from the scholarship secretariat, yeah. and you've noticed a number of things of interest. Okay, I'll let you walk us through your findings yourself. Okay. So, in um, March 2021, um, a colleague and I, Kojo Asanji Krobia, decided to put the RTR law to test mm. after we had received complaint from scholarship applicants that they had applied on several occasions, they had not gotten the scholarship, and, you know, so we decided to test the law along with other institutions as well. So we wrote to the scholarship secretary and asked for the data. They declined to give it to us and said it was private information confidential oh. so we went through the mail and then applied to the ITI Commission mm. we said that instructed them to redact the private part of it and then give us the information so subsequently we had it and the funny thing is that instead of giving us the data in um, soft copy as we did mandate it was in you know, hard copy, bulky mm. documents. <laughs> wow. So we have to retype all this. So into your system? Into retype it to make it processable, you know, easy to process. Wow. So when I heard the thing about we slept on the data, it's not true. It's the form in which it came. So we found that a number of issues. One, um, the criteria for selection. If you look at the mandates of the scholarship secretariat, it says brilliant but needy students. And on the website of the. Uh, uh, forgive me, can mm. I just say, every time I hear brilliant but needy, mm. I, I, I wonder why don't we just say brilliant and needy? The but suggests that, uh, you know, normally a brilliant person, person would never be needy <laughs> or a needy person would never be brilliant. Well, that's the catchphrase. I know. You all. I, 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 <laughs> I just had raised that point it, before. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah. bothers me every time I hear it. So I just wanted to bring that up. Forgive me. Right. Please continue. That's, that's, that's true. So if you look at the mission of the Secretariat on their mission, on their website, they said to support brilliant but needy students to acquire skills to build and contribute to building the nation mm. and also Ghanaian workers. And if you also look at um, section 2.2b of the Get Fund Act, it says to provide scholarship to brilliant but needy students in Ghanaian universities and uh, second cycle institutions. So I find it very interesting when the scholarship secretary's uh, head mm. begin to say that need is not really important in their assessment. Right. But this is what we found. We found at least 20 names at least i'm saying at least because it's a very long list over 900 names right and we are not able to confirm every single name on the list we'll publish it eventually and the public will be able to help us identify the rest but we think that those we found on on the list should not be there in the first place those 20 you those 20 should not be there okay in the first place why? Because per the definition of what brilliant but needy is, they don't fit that criteria. For instance, you have Dr. Dennis Addo, founder of Claron Hospital, mm -hmm. a board member of the NHIA at the time he got the scholarship. Mm -hmm. He got 50000 Now, if politics had no role to play in this, there was another person who had the same university the same course in the same year, that person, Evelyn Nyako, got 27, a little over 27,000. Mm -hmm. So, for, to go and study the same thing, the same thing in the same university, in the same year, disbursed to two students. different people, exactly. Okay, w did one perhaps include living allowances or something? Both. Oh, interesting. And Seth, just uh, by way of clarity, what program was that? What were they? Going public to administration. At where? Um, Harvard. Harvard. Public, public administration, administration at Harvard. Yes. yes. Ah, why Harvard? Uh, well, that's best left to because the scholarship to answer. <laughs> Interesting. 
Interesting. Yes. Okay. The, uh, we continue. found uh, another name, Fauzi Ramadan. Now the interesting thing is when you when you, we found the name, it was spelled Fawi Ramadan, F A W Y. Mm -hmm. But for me, the Ramadan rings a bell. Right. So we went searching, and the Ramadan turned out to be Fauzi Ramadan. So we called him. Did you get a scholarship? Yes, he did. Which university? He mentioned the university. But he didn't go to the university because he claimed um, it was during the COVID. And then he had um, an accident. He mm. attended a few sessions online and stopped. Mm. He didn't bother to defer the course. So we lost £17,355. Did he explain why, why he didn't? Uh, choose to defer the course? No. He said he had an accident. It affected his arm. Right. So he couldn't have continued the course. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then there is the uh, NSS Deputy Director, um, Gifty Owari Mensa now. She used to be Gifty Owari Abadi. Initially, she said, no, that's not her name. No, we said, but that's what was on the list. And what we actually... Our investigation proves that it is you. We confirmed that you attended the same university. She said she will call the secretary's registrar and get back. She didn't. The next day I called her. She said she was on her way to... She actually tested back the next day that she was driving to Sunyani. She will call back. We called her. She said she was in the middle of something. And she gave us 10 a.m. the next day. I couldn't call at 10, but I called at 3. And she said she was busy. I called again. She didn't answer, so... I mean, but this is someone who is denying that this is her. Okay, but we confirmed it. H how? How? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to. Know. That part we wouldn't want to give right. out because it's still there's a, an aspect of it that we are still investigating, mm -hmm. so it won't right. be unfair to give out the method. Yeah, but Seth, uh, w which course did you say she went to study? And she went. She did something in public policy, I believe. Public policy, uh, uh, development policy and development politics. Policy and politics. Yeah. Where? Um, University of Birmingham. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And this is like a master's or? A yeah, it's a yes, master's. Yes, mm. Okay. All right. So the suggestion here is that these people are. Which one are they not meeting? The brilliant or the needy? Which criterion are they not meeting? Or is it both? The needy criteria. I can't really see, see the brilliant part, part of it. it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so there's also Michael Oforiata. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the name Oforiata rings a bell. Related to the president, related to the former finance minister. From our search, he's Gabby's PA. Or was Gabby's PA at a point? Gabby, oh, sorry. Ochi Dakon at a point. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about his is that he did a pathway to the law course, which means a foundation course. A foundation course. Yeah, mm -hmm. a foundation course. I mean, we have universities in Ghana that are doing law. You don't need a foundation course. And if you are spending 16,740 pounds on a foundation course, I mean, that's outrageous. Mm. That's pre-law law. law. Yeah, so this is not even the law yeah. thing itself. Yeah. So the presumption that you are preparing for the main course, yes. and it cost the state how much? Sixteen thousand six hundred and forty pounds. We have uh, Adum Efadate. He is the son of Captain Efadate, mm -hmm. lawyer, leading MPP member, former minister and uh, deputy minister and uh, um, Kufo. Mm. And then Lucy Blay. Mm -hmm. Lucy Blay is the daughter of former NPP um, national chairman, mm. Freddie Blay, and, uh, and daughter of Ghana's ambassador to Germany, Gina mm. Blay. Mm. Co-owners of Daily Guide. Mm -hmm. She is a lawyer, but from what we saw, they said she had the money to go and qualify qualify lawyers transfer that's the technical <coughs> name there she's a lawyer in ghana would have to go and qualify in england and mm -hmm. wales mm -hmm. to practice so she got almost six thousand um pounds so the state
paid for a Ghanaian lawyer to qualify to be a lawyer in other countries. Uh -huh. That's what we saw. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then we have Araba Chumesi Mensa. She's the daughter of a former MP for Kwesi Mintim, Joe Mensa. Um, she went to do a pre-medicine program which cost us $36,675. What cost was Pre -medicine. it? Pre-medicine. Pre-med. And so you are preparing you to enter Where? America. In the University of Oklahoma, the U.S. Mm. Yeah. And it cost how much? Um, $36,675. Okay. Then we have Nana Edubia Asantia P2, who is the daughter of the former IGP, uh, Mr. David Asantia P2. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about her is that she was at Ashesi University mm -hmm. in 2018 doing a program in computer science. Mm -hmm. Then she got a scholarship in 2019 to go to um, University of Aberdeen in, Scotland. in the UK mm -hmm. to go and do a Bachelor of Law with options in computer science. Right. Yeah. Then we have Zina Asante. Zina is the daughter of um, famous actress Juliet Asante mm -hmm. and then currently the CEO of the National Film Authority. Mm -hmm. She also went to do pre med and uh, she had $41,026. Okay. S uh, and uh, the list goes on. Right. And, and then another one. I think this one intrigues me because this gentleman lives in the UK and from our research he's been living there since 2008 he's a treasurer of the MPP in the UK he's the treasurer of the MPP in the UK um, at the time he got a scholarship he was a task consultant and a lecturer and then he gets about 28,380 pounds which covers his cost of tuition and living costs please repeat that so he got 28,380 pounds okay and this covers cost of tuition mm -hmm. and his tuition okay cost of living and his yes, tuition, and tuition. Mm -hmm. i find it interesting because this gentleman is working Mm -hmm. Right in the UK, in the UK, living there already, living there since 2008. Where we mm -hmm. called him, he said he shuffles between the two countries. That's he, his explanation yes, for the he state need, of Ghana yeah. paying for his cost of living in the UK. Yes, because sometimes he comes. He to comes. Ghana. He said he's, he he was shuffling between the two countries. That's what he told us. So I asked him, "Are you the MPP treasurer in in the UK?" Mm -hmm. Then. I couldn't hear anything. He was just saying, hello, 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 hello. And then the line went there. But you have been able to independently verify that. Oh, yes, absolutely. Is the NPP yes. treasurer in the UK. I mean, if you even check our story online, mm. there is a, a hyperlink to that. Okay. What's yeah. his name again? Charles Asma. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Then there's Amma Frimpoma Juma. Um, the managing director of sic savings and loans so by the way just before we come back to amajuma mm. charles asma is not even working in ghana no, the, no 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 with no. the education that we paid for no he's not even he's working in, in the ghana. uk he's based in the uk, UK with yes. it he's a treasurer of the mpp in the uk all right uh, uh juma yeah i'm from poma juma she had twelve thousand two hundred dollars for a certificate course in implementing public policy also at harvard Public policy. Yeah. Ah. Certificate they do that at public Ligon policy. Other universities in Ghana. I think yes, Gimpa yes, Gimpa is likely to be right. Yes, I Gimpa. mean Ligon has public policy courses too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Interesting. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who is she? She's the a SIC. Of things? She used to be the woman woman organizer of the Isinafo North constituency of the MPP. I see. Yeah. Hmm. And then there is uh, Julius Ochre. Um, Julius Autry, from the data we have, had £57,210. But the data says in the same year, he mm -hmm. had admission to two universities. Mm -hmm. University of West England 
and Brunel University in the same year. Hey. Yeah. Wait till let me do the maths. University of West England, yes. Crampo, I haven't even So heard Julius of it. is okay. the constituency secretary for Ibuaka South. Yes. Which is a very constituency um the registrar of the scholarship secretariat comes from. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So and at, at the time he was also the Ibuaka South um district national builders core coordinator. Mm-hmm. NAVCO coordinator. Oh. Mm. And from our set, he's currently doing a PhD program in environmental science at the Brunel University. Okay. We so didn't get him for comments. Though. So he got admission to two universities in England. Yes. Uh, because Brunel is in Uxbridge. Mm-hmm. And then the University of West England, which I'm hearing about for the first time today. The rest of, uh, you know the bearing, I don't and we <laughs> and, 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 and we <laughs> gave him two scholarships yeah, that's to what study the, that's what the data says. two different programs. That's what the data says. Okay, do we know what programs? Yes. Um, so, MSc, Master of Science in Sustainable Development, mm-hmm. and the Master of Science in Entrepreneurship and Design. And, and, and we deemed, as a state, we deemed it necessary to send this particular Ghanaian to go and study these two programs at the same time in England. And we paid for both. A- again, the caveat is that is what the data says. Yes, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm basically quoting the uh, Ghana uh, <laughs> Scholarship Secretariat. <laughs> All right. Then we have Patrick, uh, Raphael, Patrick Safo. Um, I, I, I don't really get this one, but he went to uh, do, he went to Crown Agent Training and Professional Development in the UK for human resource aligning with corporate vision. He is the Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer of the MPP. When I called him, okay, I, I don't want to say this. Um, oh. he, he was really rude. He mm-hmm. said that thousands of people had benefited from the scholarship and that he's not accountable to us. Oh, That's what he said. Okay. Then there is Nana. Ra- Raphael Patrick Raphael Safo. Safo. Mm. He, he went to study. At Patrick Crown Safo. Agents. Crown Agent Training and Development. Uh-huh. He went to study human resources. I, I don't know how to capture that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> then we have Nana Poku Frefre. The Crown Agents, is it the open training courses or which one? I think it's a professional development. Yes, yes. Th- there is a mm-hmm. Crown Agents Training and Professional Development. But what I know is that they offer those uh, open training courses okay. uh, within, they have nine portfolios. That's what I was interested in. That there's leadership management and development. There is also, I mean, they are available on the internet for you to access and use. The That's why they are actually open source anyway. So, so they I are wasn't pretty sure much free, is what yes, you are saying. So I'm not sure whether it's the same thing that you were referencing. That's why I need a clarity on okay. that. Yeah. I, I don't really know about it. Okay. Open okay. source battle. Okay. And then there's Nana Poku Um, He got 28,080 pounds. But he told us that he didn't take the scholarship because he got a better offer from Get Fund. Mm-hmm. So he didn't take this one. But his name is in the records. So according to the scholarship so secretary, they paid record. for his scholarship. That's what it means. In which year? This was in 2019. I see. Yes. All right. Well, shall we... Um, uh, uh, do we have more to go? There's more. There's a Kelvin Ofori Jima. He's the president of Tescon in, in the UK. MP, uh, the, you know the student mm. we know the MPP is called Tescon. He has 17,355 pounds. And he's doing LLM International Human Rights Law. He mm. used to be the former national... A service personnel association, NASPA um, president in, in Accra, Accra Metro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is he already a lawyer? <laughs> I don't really know. Okay. I really didn't find it, didn't get that. All right. Listen, um, <laughs> there's so much, but because of time, um, I'm wondering, <laughs> we might have to serialize this thing because there's there's a lot in there. There's a lot in there. And then there's somebody who got, uh, who uh, they paid an internship. For they paid for internship at the ICC. For her to go and do internship at the internship. ICC. Yes, at the ICC. By the state? Yes. 
a lot a, a scholarship to do internship yes at the icc that's the reason i find do it, do it that's for interesting. example i mean I, I i am i'm considering that as let's say the attorney general's department says we need specific skill set mm. there and because we need you we need you to understand somebody there so that i can get this specific skill set i mean i am open to getting that clarity and understanding but would and it, it still be the scholarship secretariat that would have to foot that bill frankly i don't know all right so the reason i find it a bit problematic yeah. is that you know the scholarship secretary has spreading the funding so thinly i listened to a young lady who is in the uk now she was entitled to 1300 pounds a month mm -hmm. um she was there in january last year she got and they are supposed to pay every quarter mm. And she got the first quarter only two thousand pounds instead of a little over four thousand. Yeah, and that is the only amount the secretary has given her from March last year to today. This girl is now doing cleaning. Yeah, she's now cleaning to fend for herself. Mm. And she told me the situation is so depressing that there was a lady who was nearly raped because she couldn't afford to pay for accommodation. She went living with a guy who nearly mm. raped her. Wow. And she's telling me the conditions there now yeah. for most of these students is really depressing. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has completed her course, but she says she cannot come back now because she can't even afford to pay the plane ticket. So she wa she's hoping to get a post steady permit mm -hmm. and work to get some money. Two years. Imagine. Well, yeah. Imagine. imagine. Yeah. And so well. we, got, we also found that at least 104 of these uh, recipients of our scholarship are not returning. As in I have not uh, they completed study, their but course, haven't but they have not returned. Okay. So, this lady is Roberta. Her, her story rings a bell. Anonymized. That's mm. what her name is. Her story feeds into why they are not returning. <laughs> Churchill. Yeah. And there's, uh, we also found multiple scholarships. There are people who have received... So, somebody received a scholarship in 2019 and also got it in 2020. Consecutive. Mm. In After different course. program, he goes to do another oh, one. Yes. Then goes to do another mm. one. Exactly. Why so somebody can be given two programs the same year? Top tier human resource. Uh, so we asked, well, I'm not surprised. We asked um, the the head of the institution, Dr. Kinsley Ajiman, why he said, if the course is complementary, then the person would have to do. And I asked masters. You do two masters as complementary co courses. Well, you know. Uh, listen, let's take some messages yes, and then we'll come messages. back and digest this matter. Because when we come back, we need to ask ourselves a few questions. So hmm. these programs, are they available in Ghana? At what cost we have to do that? And also, do you know that if you were to apply for a scholarship in Ghana, do you know how much they would give you? Hmm. I can tell you an authority. If you are a PhD student, for instance, in Ghana, the scholarship secretariat will not give you more than 15,000 Ghana cities a year. Oh, really? You will not get more than 15,000 Ghana cities a year. You know, I didn't take that uh, Bezri thesis grant that mm. we're uh, talking about. Yeah. In mm. fact, there's a page they created for thesis after you come in. There's mm. 700 CD that you are yeah, purporting yeah. to give me. You. Which is serious. <laughs> which you. inquiry would I use 700 exactly. CD? Meanwhile, they are giving people 50,000 same guard residence. Yes. Look, I have I, when, when we come <laughs> back, when we come back after these messages, I'll tell you more. Your morning radio. We're talking about the information that has been shared with the fourth estate by the um, scholarship secretariat regarding the scholarships they have been giving out to Ghanaians. Now um you know, in Ghana, there aren't that many neurosurgeons, right? There aren't that many. They are a very rare breed. Well, one of them, Dr. Hadi Abdallah, joins us on the phone right now. Now, he happens to have a personal experience of an encounter with the, um, the scholarship secretariat. Uh, Dr. Abdallah, good morning to you. Uh, good morning. Hmm. Uh, good morning. How are you, Kojo, and, and uh, the rest of the team? We're all very well, and we're glad you could join us. Now, Dr. Abdallah, after listening to everything the Fourth Estate has uncovered from the um, Scholarship Secretariat data, what does this remind you of in terms of your own interactions with the Scholarship Secretariat? Uh, first of 
Thank you very much. Um, personally, um, I don't have like an experience with the scholarship experience. But there are two doctors. There are two doctors that, um, by speaking to some friends in the previous government, we managed to secure um, a fellowship program for them to study abroad. Okay. And it's an area that we never had a specialist in Ghana at the time. Okay. From that time onward, I was of the belief that that is where the scholarship secretariat should concentrate its work on. Because we are building a nation. It is about nation building. And we should look at examples of the Chinese and the Indians who sent some of their brilliant students abroad, especially in the U.S., to go and train in areas come back to their country and improve. But this morning, listening to um, the official from uh, the fourth estate, I felt very sad that we are still sponsoring people to go for programs that are still in this country. If we continue to do this, I mean, law, something like free meds, I'm wondering why we spend money that amount of money, $40,000, to send a Ghanaian to go to the U.S. to go and do pre-med course. Meanwhile, as I speak, there are several spe uh, specialties that people want to go abroad. Specialties that we don't even have one Ghanaian to go abroad just to go and train, come back, and then train more Ghanaians. We don't want to do that. Meanwhile, we are ready to sponsor people to go and do law. When we have University of Ghana doing law, we have uh, GIMPA offering even law degree programs. You know, and, and, and for me, if we really want to build Ghana and we want this scholarship secretariat to be very useful to us and the next generation, we must begin to look at areas that will take us to the next level as the Chinese and the Indians did, where they go into the STEM programs, go and study, and then come back. Why, why, why are we not looking at uh, aeronautics, for example? How many aeronautics engineers do we have in Ghana? Why don't we want to spend money to send people to go and study in, in those areas? Aren't we thinking of going to the moon? If we continue to sponsor people, to go and read a uh, uh, bachelor's program, PhD in administration. When will we get there? When will we get to the moon? When will Africans get to the moon? It just doesn't happen. We must be intentional about it. And when we have opportunities like this, as we have with the scholarship secretariat, these are the areas we should be targeting. With all due respect, I think it, it is so unfair to sponsor people to go and read masters in ad administration or PhD in administration or law. Yes, I would agree. If there is a specialized program in law that we want to sponsor people to, to go and read and then come yeah. back and help the nation through teaching, it helps. Could you, I'll give you a typical example. There was one man who had a scholarship to go to Germany. He's called Dr. Mutawakil Idrisu. He studied neurosurgery, came back to Ghana, and as I speak, almost all the neurosurgeons in Kolebu, this man is responsible for training all of us. That is impactful. At that time, we had only one neurosurgeon in Ghana when this man returned. And just look at his impact. Another good example is Professor Fimpon Boateng. We didn't have a cardiothoracic surgeon. He went to Germany, even with his own money, then came back. Today we have the cardiothoracic surgeon. Today Ghana has become the, the, the center for training of cardiothoracic surgeons. 
this is where I think we should be spending our money. It is not just with medicine. But as I said, even aer- aeronautics, we should think big. We hmm. think big. We should stop. I think there should be an embargo on, on sponsoring people to go and read administration. And I'll, I'll just give you a personal example when I was in SSS. In my SSS, I was the best student academically. I was a sportsman. I played multiple sports. Would you believe that I never had any state scholarship when I was in secondary school? Hmm. But a lot has passed under the bridge. If we have money and we want to spend it in this manner, we can never get to where the Chinese, the Singaporeans, the Malaysians, the Indians have got into. Hmm. At least we have those examples. And I think that the scholarships area to refocus. Indeed. Dr. Hadi Abdullah, a neurosurgeon uh, at Kolibu, sharing his thoughts with us there. I mean, it's very difficult to disagree, isn't it? Yes, I get your point, Kojo. I'm just looking at the school fees mm-hmm. of University of Ghana, Shadow of Academy Fees 2023-2024, College mm-hmm. of Health Sciences. And uh, I, I looked at the medical school with a third party involvement, 2,897 cities. <laughs> Dental, 2,887. School of Pharmacy, 4,458. School of Pharmacy top up, 11,000 cities. School of Biomedical and Allied Health, 4,190. School of Nursing, 3,770. When you take one of these $50,000, just multiplied by the current going rate, anyone that suits your fancy, <laughs> and tell me the number of students. And Kojo, I know institutions today that are funding school fees of otherwise people would have stayed home, who would have never made it to the medical school in the Republic of Ghana. Yeah. Those guys, they got excellent grades, all A's. They didn't mm. get a scholarship from our state. To fund our education here, mm-hmm. paying three thousand, they cannot pay. I'm not talking about edu- uh, they are feeding everything, paying three thousand. There's something that Dr. Edward Mahama says all the time. He says if it was the time that he was going to medical school in Legon, his community, it was free, so his community actually contributed money and put him on a bus and brought him to University of Ghana to go and do his medical program. He would have been a doctor. Mm. There are many Edward Mohammeds in the Republic of Ghana today. All that they require is this 3,400 cities. Cities. We are wasting it on somebody who's purportedly studying politics and policy somewhere else. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you see, mostly, mostly, when those people, when they get all the ace like their colleagues have gotten here, they don't seek those ones. They don't seek those scholarships. So you, see, you get my I, point. Uh, uh, quick, um, yeah, Raymond, just to add up to, we did a little analysis of uh, funding. Mm-hmm. There was one particular person who had this consecutive uh, scholarship, forty uh, about forty one thousand for um, postgraduate certificate in human resource management in Canada, <laughs> and another in the following year about forty thousand Canadian dollars for. Um, project management. Ah! Now, when we did the analysis, the same program, MSc project management at UPSA, mm-hmm. if you add his, the total, and com- 81,000, and convert that to today's exchange rate, that fee could educate about over 60 MSc man- uh, project management student, uh, student at UPSA. That Jesus. that is the, that is what the data says. So, um, <laughs> University scary. of uh, thank you for that. <laughs> university of West England yeah. happens to be in Bristol. Yeah, and then the other university, Brunel, yeah. is in Uxbridge, yeah. which is not far from Oxford, yeah. right? So, in order for this guy to have studied in both universities and collected cost of living for both, mm. he would literally have had to travel from Uxbridge near Oxford. To Bristol, Bristol, basically traveling from uh, the, the, su- the the sort of um, s- southeast East. to the west, to the southwest of England every day. That's 
175.4 kilometers a day. Well, I don't even know how he would do that because literally, which part of which time of the day would you travel and which time of the day would you do your lectures? He would have to do that, tra travel 175.41 kilometers every single day for a year to have studied both courses in the same year. Look. And we paid for it. Kojo, I mean, while having this conversation, actually, somebody just sent me a message. I think some years ago, he walked up here and talked about, you know, needing assistance. And I said, why don't you, you know, so I directed him to the scholarship secretariat. He writes to say they didn't give him the scholarship. All he needed was 14,000 Ghana cities to do a master's in public health at the um, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Yeah. 14,000 Ghana cities. Just in this country. One he month. didn't get it. Now, oh, I was talking Convert about... Convert to dollars. Yes, I was talking about it's, PhDs. It's about or so. In fact, the a PhDs. Yeah. In fact, the PhDs, actually. I mean, I mean I'm told that they just will pay 12,000 cities a year for you. Yeah. 12,000 cities. So, there are people who are, I mean, who have to pay, say, 20,000 a year as their school, as their PhD fees. 20,000. They won't pay it. They, they won't pay, pay 12. It. They'll pay 12,000. Meanwhile, we can. But when you are taking somebody out there, you are going to pay their school fees, pay their feeding fee, pay their residential. And you, and Meanwhile, you, the person probably already lives in that country. And, and you ask the question. Seen examples. You ask the question. Look, I seated here. We have said that. Do we have these programs in Ghana? Yes, we do. What's the business sending somebody outside the country to actually study for the same program that is in this country? Psycho HR. Psychology. HR. What is that? So if so, we paid fifty thousand dollars for somebody to go and do a master's in public administration, Baba. a medical doctor. That same program is run at the University of Ghana Business School. Yeah, it won't cost him a tenth of that money. Fifty thousand dollars, more than five hundred thousand Ghana cities, giving to one person. Five hundred thousand, oh. Five hundred thousand cities. Giving to one person. Look, I agree with Dr. H H Hadi Abdullah when he says that. Today, mm. if we want to sponsor people to go and say learn nuclear energy, some form of nuclear energy, yeah. that would come and transform our economy. I'm all for it. Fix our send energy him, problems. Mm. Send him outside the country to go. And we must ensure that that person comes back into the country to come and help us. But if all we do is to wait for, uh, you know, uh, people to get into office and then once you get into office to we start the con conversation about oh then all of a and look just as we're having this conversation Ghanaian students in Hungary yeah. 4th April have sent a statement their stipends have not been paid they have not been paid and it's this is consistent I I, I mean for the number of years I've worked in this industry, basically every year, students telling us that their stipends have not been paid. They yet we are still sending more people out Meanwhile, there. Meanwhile, some party functionary has been given you know, fifty thousand, and, and, fifty thousand of the king's pounds. Look, yeah. this is the worst part. The worst part is that for many people in Ghana, actually, before you even get the twelve thousand, ten thousand that will be giving to you, you have to do amamre. You have spent oh half of the money. God. Yes. Paid or spent half of the money in the process. <laughs> what kind of a system are we running? But if you listen to the boss of the scholarship secretariat, he insists that they don't care about party card or party colors, that they will give the scholarship based on what? Merit? Uh, in, in fact, um, <laughs> when we spoke to him, he was very dismissive of uh, the idea that uh, scholarships are meant for brilliant but needy students. He said, all you need is an admission letter and to be a Ghanaian. That's it. In the dom level list, some people could not even produce admission letters. Yeah. We gave the money. You remember that yeah. long list? Yeah. Some people could not even produce admission letters to schools. Basic requirement. But yet, we gave them money. And, but you see, nobody lost their jobs at the time. We complained. We kept on shouting. Kisley Ajima and Co. are still in office. We would have expected that that would have been, this is to 2019 or so, so that would have been a very good step for them to reform the structures there. We have come back. There's another report here. I don't sense by his body language the responses, and I've heard some of them. 
that Kingsley Ajiman and his friends are interested in reforming any institution. I so why are they there? I want him to explain oh, the on. guy who got two scholarships to study in two universities. He's very brilliant. Over a hundred ki 170 kilometers apart in the same year at the same time. I want to know. Well, his explanation was that this could be an administrative error in the data. That was the explanation he gave us. If we find those two scholarships, yeah, but he should be finding in the out. same year. <laughs> it's an administrative error. It could be. It could be. Yeah, but Seth, he should be finding out why that's an administrative error. It's and correct it. And correct it. it. He just wasn't <coughs> throw it to you. Yeah, that's what that's what he told us. <coughs> and when I listened uh, to yeah. him on on Joy yesterday, he said that the data we had, um, he is not sure of it, <laughs> and that we didn't show him the data. But it's absolutely it not true. It, it came from him. And we actually you. showed him the double scholarships. And that's when he was defending it that, oh, if skill set is very expensive, if somebody gets a scholarship and he gets another one the following year, it is complimentary. In a proper republic, he will not be in office. How does he also explain how two people can apply to study the same program in the same university in the same year? But the one who happens to be a party member gets what twice as much almost twice yeah as the one who is not same program was he able to explain that was that also an administrative error or a banking error or was it printer's devil what was it <laughs> what's the explanation for that one What's the explanation for any of it? O honestly, what's the explanation for a poor country? Yeah. A poor country that can't pay its bills, that can't feed its children, that can't put its sick on beds in hospitals. What's the name of the Muftal school? What is the explanation? Do, the Muftal school. Do, the do. kids, they are sitting on the floor. Sitting on the floor. Yes. What is the explanation for a country that can't afford for its own citizens who have worked for their pensions yeah. to access the money they themselves have earned we can't afford any of those things but we can afford for some district party executive to go and study abroad for fifty thousand pounds money that can provide a, all the desk required in that school a program that they could so easily do here in ghana and the state doesn't have to pay for yeah because I mean, because you are why why is it our business? <laughs> well, wow. you know what? It's better we wrap up at this point because I think we are just on the verge of some kind of coronary well, <laughs> incident. Um, Kojo, so you know, before we wrap up, I mm. just want to read a certain poem. Uh, this is one by Henry Balo of Uganda. Uh, if you have time, read it. it. Says building a nation. I'll just read the first two, and I'll summarize the rest for you. It says today. I did my share in building the nation. I drove a permanent secretary to an important urgent function. In fact, to a luncheon at the uh, Vic. Now, the menu reflected its importance. Cold beer with small talk, then fried chicken with niceties, wine to fill the hollowness of the laugh, ice cream to cover the stereotype jokes, coffee to keep the peers awake on the return journey. And as he drove him back, that's what he said. He yawned many times in the back of the car. Then to keep awake, he suddenly asked, did you have any lunch, my friend? I replied, looking straight ahead and secretly smiled at his belated concern. Then I had not, but was slimming. Upon which he said with a seriousness that amused me. He said, I had nothing to. I attended to matters of the state. Highly delicate diplomatic duties, you know. <laughs> and friend, it goes against my grain. Causes me stomach ulcers and wind. Ah, he continued, yawning again. The pains we suffer in the building of the nation. I'm sure you get it, right? <laughs> <laughs> all, th all these people. <laughs> Certainly, we'll be paying you to suffer. <laughs> all these people will turn around and say, we're doing so much. Yeah, we are public servants. But hey, check it again. So we, we paid somebody a salary to do this to us. Give him free fuel, probably. You know what? Let's not think deep. Otherwise, uh, we won't sleep. Let's, take, let's uh, uh, say a big thank you to all of you for uh, tuning in. We are glad you did. We're back tomorrow with more.